five months since we moved our furniture business into this warehouse. And we're in love with this warehouse. It allows us to do so much more than what we were doing in our garage and living room before. I mean, duh, it's a lot easier to ship and fulfill cutting boards when you're using a real table instead of an ironing board behind the couch. We can also make sales calls without getting distracted. In the house, there's only so much room and we would be interrupting each other when we needed the other person to be quiet while we were working in the office. But now in the warehouse space, Davis can be out here building, being as loud as he wants. I can be in the sales office making phone calls in the peace and quiet and Caleb can be in the other office editing a video all at the same time. It's fantastic. Please record your message. Hey Holly, it's Jenny. Hey, I have more info on your group's cutting board order. Give me a call when you get this and we'll talk then. Bye Holly. Dude, that's the worst. Like they can't even clear out their inbox. You breached the voicemail system. Is your name, phone number, and a brief message? Hi, you breached the voicemail first. Hey, is this Lisa? Hello. It is. Hey, Lisa, this is Jenny.
I mean, sure, we solved the problem of not having enough space, but now our biggest bottleneck is time. But we have to spend our limited time making money. I mean, we got employees to pay, we got rent to pay now, and so we need to be working in the business as much as possible. But in addition to working in the business, we also need to work on the business. So we have to also spend time working on the business. And that's a really tough balance to strike. How much time do you allocate to both? So that's the fear that we're following this week. The fear that we're afraid that we're not spending our time in the right places. Managing time is something we're a little nuts about. The military really beat that one into us good. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the military, to get people and resources into the right place at the right time. Whether that's a bullet through a bad guy, a pallet of supplies for relief to another country, or getting weather data in time so that we can warn people to evacuate ahead of a hurricane. And because of our experience in the military, we're always asking ourselves, are we spending our time on the right things? Anyways, to bring all of this back down to earth, this week we are just trying to identify some things that take a little bit too much time and make some improvements on them. And the first thing is shipping out our cutting and charcuterie boards. Honestly, that's the one we do most often. So if we're trying to save time, this is a great place to start. Okay, so when we have to fulfill a board, we start at the computer. So once we print the order and acknowledge it to the customer and stick it on the bulletin board, we start by selecting the board that we need. So we go across the way here and pick out whatever board we need off the inventory shelf. Then we take it back across and put it in the laser. And then we go back to the computer and we design it and then we engrave the design. And then we take the finished board from there and we take it over here to the finishing table and then we finish it and then we take it back over here to wrap it up in paper and then put the stuffings in the boxes and then we box it up and then once we're done boxing it up on this short little six foot table if we've got multiple ones to do we'll put it on this cart over here on the other side and then it will go and be shipped out that's one two three four five back and forths across the whole thing. That's a lot of walk-in. There's boxes everywhere, there's fans going, it's hot, and we're trying to film the whole time. It's just a lot of inefficiencies. It would be so much faster if it was all just one assembly line from start to finish. And since this is one of the procedures we do most often throughout the week, it's gonna save us a ton of time by streamlining it. That's what you've been watching us do. We're just rearranging the shipping and fulfillment area to be way more optimized to get things out the door quickly. Oh my gosh, okay, it's all fixed and rearranged now and it looks so good. Let me show you how the procedure is gonna work. So I move the computer down to the end. There's no need for it to be in the middle disrupting the whole flow. So it's down here, that's station one. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here, get as many boards as you're gonna fulfill, put them on a cart, and then take the cart over here to the laser. And then after the boards get laser engraved here, they're just gonna go two steps over to the finishing station where they get finished and leather straps for the charcuterie boards, feet for the cutting boards. Then they're gonna go to the next station 
I don't know why I'm still bringing the cart. Then we're gonna go to the next station where they get packed. So we do the black box, we stuff in whatever flyers each box gets, and then we move to the shipping station where we put the black box in a brown box, slap a shipping label on it, and send it out the door right there, or right there. Look at this, it's all just one line, except for pulling inventory off the racks, everything is in one straight line. And all of our supplies and everything as needed are on the back wall. So say you're packing over here and you run out of, of I don't know, black boxes, you just turn right around, grab as many as you need, put them on the shelf and you're good for a little while. So another area in our business where we waste a lot of time is producing content. I mean, we're documenting the growth of our furniture business and obviously we make YouTube videos, but we also do a morning show every day live on Twitch at 7 a.m. Central. You should come hang out, it's a good time. But that gets chopped up and turned into TikToks and Instagram Reels and posts, and then we make that into a podcast. Our YouTube videos also get chopped up and turned into TikToks. We're always working on filming educational programs in the background to help you guys grow your businesses. We make a lot of extra content for members of the Stud Stack. All of that adds up to a lot of work. And producing content can get really hairy really fast. A lot of y'all know trying to make content for your businesses. It's, it's no small feat to feed half a dozen algorithms. So we need to do as little as possible to go from filming to editing to posting. And this week we had some help from our friends at Anchor to help make our production process just a little bit smoother. The biggest inefficiency that we have when it comes to doing media production is collaboration. For editing, Caleb uses the biggest, baddest MacBook that we could find. And while it's amazing at rendering video, it's also really bad because it's a laptop. You're kind of hunched over, it's not very ergonomic, and it's got a tiny screen. It's the biggest screen that they have, but it's still a relatively tiny screen. And when you're doing a lot of media work and watching footage playback and stuff like that, you really want a bigger screen. And because it's a brand new MacBook Pro, it's got that fancy computer chip in there and it's really hard to find a system where you can plug in multiple monitors. And that's where Anchor saves the day. They've got this MacBook hub that allows you to connect up to three additional monitors into a MacBook Pro that's got the new silicon M1 chip. It's a plug and play system. There's no software to download. It can support up to three additional monitors. If you've ever used a multiple monitor setup, you know how nice it can be. This upgrade is really gonna help us save time in the office and now I don't have to push Caleb out of the way when I want to micromanage his edit from a tiny little screen over his shoulder. Now I can micromanage him from afar without straining my eyeballs. In both of our businesses, we use the M1 iMacs that just came out last year. I, I love these computers. They're absolutely great, but there's one huge flaw. All of the ports are on the backside of the computers. Because the stupid ports on the iMac are on the back of the computer. I always knock something over on my desk, which disrupts the creative flow. I lose the idea. But Anchor makes this awesome little hub that clamps onto the chin of the front of the iMac. And you've got a memory card reader, you've got USB ports, you've got USB-C port. It's, it's an amazing little device that just saves us a ton of headache. And it's the little things like that that keep us in the creative flow when we're thinking about making content. Click on the link below the like button in the description and take a look at all the amazing things that they have to offer. They're a great company. We've bought plenty of things for them. And when I'm buying electronics on Amazon, I always try to like find the ones that are made by Anchor just because they make really good stuff. So now that we've streamlined a few things this week, we have more time to do things that make us money. But no matter how much we optimize, Davis and I are only ever going to have about 50 to 60 hours in any given week but we need to do more than that. So how do we get more time? We clone ourselves. No. Until that's figured out, we can buy time from other people. And that's our next task, hiring more people to help us build and grow the furniture business. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the player.